Hey, what's up, Sarah? How you I'm doing? So sorry, I was I just suck. I was helping my sister with something and just lost track of time. Oh, that's all right. All good. I appreciate it. Yeah. How's it going? It's going all right. It's going all right. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to do this today. Wow. Been a while since I've spoken to somebody out in Seattle. I was going to say, you do not sound like you're from here. <laughs> We're in North Carolina. Oh, nice. We Sounds have about... Funny. um. Uh, we have we have about six thousand restaurants around the U.S. and like some of those are in Canada. But um, I mean, we've got customers out there. It's just the fact I came out there one time um, years ago, filmed a um, a video series with uh, Willie Boutillier. You know him? Mm -hmm. They're down. Uh, what is? It? I'm drawing a blank on the name of his restaurant. It's down the next to that in that market area. Um, Pike Place. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pike Place Market. Yep. Nice. Um, beautiful city you have lush and green and just beautiful yeah that's a good like right now is peak like green all the flowers are blooming it feels good are you from that area i'm from alaska originally um but we've lived here for like 11 years you're from alaska yeah you're the first person i've ever known that's from alaska that's really cool yeah so i'm you know as close as i can get without actually being there I got you. Well, so, well, tell me about, um, uh, you've got a, what a cool uh, story y'all have. I love just the whole, th you know, how was Homer the dog doing? I guess I'll ask that first. Homer's great. I know he's not here right now, otherwise I would, you know, introduce you formally, but um, no, he's sweet. He's seven, which is such a good, like, you know, they're starting to calm down, but no health issues, just like a good sweet spot for a dog. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. It's, I'm, I'm glad that we named the restaurant after him because, you know, we live two blocks from the restaurant and now he's sort of like a little fixture in the neighborhood, which I think just makes it even feel more special and, um, you know, people recognize him, which is funny. When did y'all open the restaurant? 2018. 2018. Yeah. Okay. Um, and this is, so it's you and your husband, Logan? Yep. Okay. Did you, and how, like, what's your backstory, Sarah? How did you get into hospitality initially? Um, my, so Logan and I met at a restaurant in DC. Um, we, we were living in DC when we met, um, he's from Northern Virginia, but kind of cooked in DC for many years. And I had just quit a job. I was working in the Obama administration and oh. was kind of like a little feeling a little burnt out. And a friend of mine was like, Oh, I, you know, my buddy works at this restaurant. You can come be a server there. And it was, so I quit that job and um, started serving and working at this little furniture shop. Um, and met Logan. And we worked there together, I think, for about a year and then decided to move out west. So he, um, I think he always, you know, he's from the East Coast, but always had this idea in his head that the West Coast would be a really fun place both to live and also just kind of an inspired place to cook. Yeah, for sure. The ingredients of the Pacific Northwest and sort of the bounty and access to um, different seafood and flora and fauna. So he he was super excited about it. Um, and I was excited because it meant moving closer to family and being closer to home. So we spent that was in 2011 and that summer we spent no 2013 sorry spent living in alaska in homer alaska for the summer okay okay and that was sort of a what inspired ultimately when we got our dog the name for the dog and then the restaurant i got gotcha. you okay but yeah i don't really have a hospitality background i mean and, and my role at the restaurant is much more uh, systems, kind of back end spreadsheets, operations, um, and design because I do interior design. So I did the build out and the design, which was really fun. But it's obviously that's kind of a finite chapter in the evolution of a restaurant. Yeah, for sure. But you did. I mean, it's, it's really well done. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, your aesthetics is really cool. Website, all of it. Um, really, yeah. really well done. We, um, you know, got lucky. It's an old brick building. So it has a lot of character and charm and, you know, transformed it totally but at least it has that kind of fundamental um kind of sweetness about it do, do you own the building no i wish we i wish <laughs> but you live two blocks away huh yeah we live two blocks away so which is great i mean there's sometimes it feels like you know we don't get out of this neighborhood but i wouldn't change it for anything oh, 
That's so cool. Well, yeah. so so you opened in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, how long did it take you to, I mean, were y'all planning it for several years prior to that? or? I think the longest stretch of that planning process was just finding a space. Like, you know, that's kind of the one thing you can't change is the location. So we were pretty particular about someone's coming into my house. I'm going to go upstairs. Um, sorry, one second. No. Yeah, all good. We were pretty particular about where it was going to be. You can get a little tour of my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that, and we actually, funnily enough, we signed on a space and then we ended up losing our earnest money and bailing because it was just this like kind of cold feet. Like this is not the right location. It's not the right size. But when you want to open your own business, you kind of, you know, you feel like this need to move forward. And thank God we kind of trusted our gut because then a few months later found the space that we're ultimately in. But I think the whole process was like a few years of like, you know, coming up with a business plan, financing, design, the whole thing. And did you, and so you have another place, right? Milk drunk? Yeah. So that is also down the street um, and kind of a similar, like cute standalone brick building. Um, both of our landlords live in the neighborhood. So it all feels very like neighborhoody, which is nice. Um, and at Homer, we have a little soft serve window. So soft serve is like our main dessert. So you can yeah. walk up to the window and get a cone, or you can obviously eat it at the restaurant. But so Milk Drunk is sort of a spin off, like a more casual, um, it was like soft serve cocktails and fried chicken. Did you, so did you open that after Homer? Yeah, so we opened that in August of 2020. Oh, what well, you open in August of 2020. Yeah, which like, you know, when the pandemic hit, we were already, we were in the middle of construction. Yeah. So it delayed it a little bit. And funnily enough, I feel like it ended up, I mean, it kind of kicked our butts, honestly, to open that. Like we had a seven month old, we were trying to open a new restaurant, pandemic, <clears throat> beers, whatnot. Um, but for the concept it was, which is kind of a more quick service, takeout it ended up being a good fit for that time um so that's I guess one silver lining of opening a restaurant in a pandemic it's not like we were trying to open a fine dining sit down yeah yeah so well now it's okay, really so, like a good compliment to each other I think well I mean I bet there's a lot of people uh for so many reasons fried chicken and sauce or ice cream during the pandemic comfort exactly. food quick easy, like, yeah uh, easy takeout stuff. Uh, so is was Restaurant Homer your first restaurant that y'all owned? Yep. Yeah. So Logan worked, um, you know, he's worked in many different restaurants. He started cooking right out of college. So for 20 years, but that was the first one that we that we owned. Um, and so and when you were working on your plan, um, well, a couple of things I want to ask you about. One is I mean, you don't have to share details, but like when you mentioned financing, do y'all borrow or get investors or both? Combination. So we took out a home equity loan on our house and that, you know, it's a lot. You put so much, there's so much risk in opening a restaurant. Um, yeah. And thank God it went well because if it doesn't, and also, you know, when you sign a lease, you're signing a personal guarantee for the most part. And that's probably very state by state, but in our state, you sign, kind of sign your life away. Um, so it was a combination of borrowed money, uh, like from family, which, you know, paid back, but kind of, a scare, less scary maybe than borrowing from a bank. Mm. Um, and obviously feel grateful that we were even able to do that and then took out a loan on our house and then, and then one investor, which has worked out really well. You know, I, we kind of thought, oh, do we have a million small investors? Is that better? Do you have one bigger investor? I remember a friend at the time was like, I don't know how true this is, but it feel it's resonated with us was like the people who give you the smallest amount of money are going to be the biggest thorns in your side. <laughs> like a small yeah. amount of money to someone is a big deal to them, of course. Um, yep, that's right. It worked out really well having we have one couple that helped us. Um, and so that's I think we, we feel lucky in that regard. There's not a lot of like cooks in the kitchen. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you get a bunch of smaller investors and then everybody has different time frames and their needs change. And for somebody that 
you know, can only invest 2,500 bucks or five grand, that's probably a ton of money to that person. And so, and then you're having to deal with communicating with all these folks and that takes a lot of time and energy and stressful. So good for y'all, really good for y'all. It's a, uh, it's an interesting proposition. It's, it, it really is a big risk. I mean, you, you, did y'all, I mean, you must've had nights where you're like, are we really doing this? Like, are we really going to put our, our, our home on the line and personal get like, you know, yeah. all the equity? like, did you have those conversations or did y'all just feel like once you decided, like, let's, let's we're going to figure this out and we're going to make it work. It kind of felt like once it was in motion, the train had left the station, like it was happening. Yeah, and also okay. I think in restaurants, like you do for Logan, so, you know, he was the head chef at a nice restaurant, but you do sort of plateau in terms of your, you know, ability to have a flexible schedule or you, you know, just your earning potential. Like, I think within that industry, there's sort of a cap. And then if you're not an owner, like, you know, you just sort of hit a little bit of a wall. Um and so for us, it was kind of like, all right, we have this combination of talents. Like I can do a lot of the systems and back end. Logan's obviously more like I'm not dictating the menu. He's obviously kind of like the creative engine. Um, and so you know, I can see how hard it would be for someone to do alone. And I think for us, thank God our talents complement each other and we get along and that it went well. <laughs> but there's definitely a leap of faith for sure. Um and that I think is where the location really mattered. Like it's, I can't know, it's a kind of a sliding doors moment. I don't know what would have happened if we had been at the other spot, but there's, there's a huge, I think a huge part of our success is, you know, I think we're churning out a good product, but also like it is in a spot where there's good foot traffic and visibility and um, you know, that, that is so important. But obviously you can't have a crap restaurant in a good location, but yeah, <laughs> um, it just yeah. takes, it's like a symphony of so many different factors um, that just make it work. A symphony of so many different factors is a great way to put it. I mean, the restaurant business, you have to master so many different skills. Good that y'all have those complementary skills and good that y'all are able to, you know, do this as a couple. I mean, business partnerships are hard, even, even with good balanced complementary skills and all that kind of stuff. And to do as a couple too, that's, that's pretty awesome. So that's, yeah, that's spent a lot of time together. Also, it kind of ironically, so we had a baby, I mean, nine months after we opened or 10 months. Um, and I think in a weird way, having a child also forced us to be better delegators. So instead of kind of micromanaging staff or feeling like super perfectionist, I mean, you can't like mm -hmm. you have a newborn, you have to kind of take, you know, your priority shift and you just end up spending a little bit less time at the restaurant, at least for a little bit. And so I think for me in particular, that helped me kind of, you know, just take, not be as concerned with every little granular detail, but um, kind of think about more big picture stuff. It's funny how things that sometimes in life, like we have to be forced into things that we wind up realizing make us better or, you know, make our business better. I mean, like COVID forced a lot of people to do a lot of things to their restaurants or change a lot of things that they probably had on their list, but hadn't gotten to or whatever. And oh my God, yeah. Like the patios and all the things that people are, well, you in North Carolina, you have probably a little more optimal outdoor seating weather, but here we had to be super creative about, you know, how do you get people seated and comfortable? And yeah, it, I agree. I think a lot of people in a weird way now are benefiting from that kind of forced ingen ingenuity. <laughs> No doubt about it. I mean, sometimes those those like really short, you know, really acute shocks like they, they cause that. I mean, ha, we have. I mean, I have three kids, so I know what it's like having a having a young one and and just trying to figure out like how do you balance the the, thing, the things that you thought were like an important part of your day or whatever you did prior to that. Uh, you realize, you know, well, we we got to figure out another way around this. Um, well, so. Um, and so how old, how old is, is it a boy or a girl? I have a, a girl, so she'll be four this summer. She'll be four. I bet she loves that salsa or ice cream. Oh my God. It's like, I don't think she's, I think she's just realizing like, oh my God, my parents own ice cream stores. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Homer, it's, and it's, what's that? Does Homer get to have ice cream too? Oh yeah, of course. He's always <laughs> getting a little. <laughs> 
That's awesome. Um, yeah. Well, so tell me about the what's happened with staff over the last couple of years. It seemed like every you know during COVID, a lot of people kind of left the industry. It sort of seems like it, some are coming back, or it's not quite as hard to hire anymore. But that also seems to be depending on where you are in the country as well. I'm curious how it's going there. I think you're pretty much nailed it. Like there was definitely a period where, I mean, truly, like we used to get a lot of just emails like, Hey, if you're hiring, I'm, here's my resume kind of, or we would post an ad and you get so many responses. And then there was a while where, I mean, just nothing like you couldn't. And we ended up hiring a lot of people who probably, to be honest, were underqualified, but you just needed a warm body. Yeah. And some of those people have actually ended up, you know, it's been fun. Like I think there's certain cooks in particular who might've been a little green, but have, you know, we've been able to train and, um, but there was a definitely, we've had some staff that have been there from day one. Like we've had people have been there for four years. And then there was a period where it felt like this just immense amount of churn and turnover. Um, and obviously there was a period where we just didn't have that many staff because we weren't, we were just doing takeout or it was a pretty like skeleton crew. But I feel like now things are definitely better. Like it, I wouldn't say they're hundred percent back to normal, but it feels like there's, it's a little bit easier to hire and retain, but um, yeah, there was like a nine to 12 month period where it was pretty bad <laughs> or someone was on board and then quit. Like it just, I don't know. There wasn't, you didn't have that like sense of family that our restaurant always had just sort of yeah. this like, revolving door and we couldn't quite figure out why. And you think so that's starting to come, come back a little bit. It feels like it's getting a little better. Yeah. Well, um, so do you, what do you all have plans for, for new concepts or um, what you have? It's so, I feel like our quality of life is so good because the two spots are in our neighborhood that, you know, mm. milk drop, for example, would be an easy thing to replicate. Like it's very, um, it's kind of designed in a way to do that. And that had always been our vision. And, and we might one day, but there's also, like, I know from talking to other people with multiple restaurants, like, the second you have to go to, you know, drive 20 minutes to get to that spot or go there, it just, it does change your quality of life. And I think having a young kid and, you know, wanting to grow family, I just am very loath to do anything that is going to make our life harder and not be, you know, it's really tempting to just expand and do more and I don't know. I'm kind of a little bit, uh, I guess, abnormal in that sense. I just want to have my, like, I just want to keep things the way they are. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know that you are necessarily. I mean, there's, it just depends. I mean, we've seen, I mean, we've been doing this 16 years and, and um, we've seen people that, you know, that growth is really the the driver and that's what their objective is. And we've seen, I, mean, I know so many people that have concepts that could full on, you know, expand and open more locations or franchise or both or whatever. But it's that, you know, you always come back like, what are we doing this for? You know, is it to, you know, make tons and tons of money and be working 100 hours a week and managing thousands of people? Or is it just to, you know, have good balance and good quality of life? And uh, yeah. there's a lot of people in the restaurant, independent restaurant business that, you know, that's, that's important, which is cool because then it makes what you are doing at Milk Drunk and at Restaurant Homer just unique. And it's, it, you know, increases demand when there's, you know, they're not everywhere. And then people want to, you know, they probably drive further to come and visit because they hear good things. And yeah, like Homer, I, I, for example, we would never duplicate because it just feels like it would almost dilute like yeah. how special this one is. Like it's definitely one and done. Whereas Milk Drunk, it's like, I don't think that would really fundamentally alter you know, how people experience it. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. So, and I think also, I mean, to comment on your product, like I am also kind of in a big, uh, we're in this sort of phase of fine tuning and perfecting. And like, you know, when you open a spot, you kind of have your systems, like you just set them up and it's kind of like when you move into a house and you unpack your stuff in the kitchen and five years later, you're like, is this exactly where this stuff should be? This is just where I put it. It's how I've been yeah. living with it. Right. But like 
for five years, we've been putting, doing a schedule on a Google sheet and emailing it to people. And then we're like, maybe there's a better way to be doing this. And I think it's a little unnerving because as restaurateurs, you get hit with so many products and do this and you need this and optimize and blah, blah, and it feels a little overwhelming. But also I think part of my you know, apprehension to expand is like, I wanna make sure what, we, what we're doing now is really dialed and efficient and feels, you know, so streamlined before bringing copy catting a system to another spot. So, yeah. Well, I've been having this conversation a lot recently um, with people that own restaurants. I, I don't know how y'all manage the, there's 250 to 300 restaurant technology companies in existence right now, selling yeah. everything from scheduling to online ordering to websites to, you know, whatever. Oh, it's so much noise. I, how do you do that? Like, I'm, I'm super curious. Like, I don't know how I can't imagine. Like I've been, it's been, I've been thinking about it a lot. I, I keep thinking about if I own a restaurant and I have on any given day, 300 different people trying to, sell me their product just in technology that doesn't have anything to do with all the other aspects of the restaurant food purveyors and all that stuff but like yeah the amount of noise has got to be uh, I guess you're saying it's, it can be it's got to be overwhelming sometimes yeah you mostly just delete emails, just delete emails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and I think you know for something like it depends on the scale of your restaurant like we have a small restaurant so we don't need to like scan our invoices and have the you know we just there's certain things certain tools that just don't make sense for us. Um, uh, but it does always make you wonder, are there tools I'm not optimizing and this could be easier. And, yeah. but it's also such a learning curve to adopt and integrate a new thing that sometimes you're kind of hesitant to change any system because like, Oh, it's fine the way it is. But, um, yeah, I'm not answering your question really, but it's, um, kind of, I think you just kind of take one thing at a time. Like, you know, we've changed POS systems, I think twice. And like, you know, every time it's so overwhelming and you're always like, wow, I'm really glad I did that. You know, yeah. no system is perfect, like especially POS um, or anything, but it does, usually it's worth the headache of adopting something. Um, and I think then it's just listening to your gut about what do you truly need and figuring out, all right, we're a small business with not a huge ton of like profit, you can only pay for so many right. services. Yeah. I mean, you can die a death by a thousand cuts if you, you know, just, or, you know, 30 bucks here, 50 bucks there, 129 yeah. bucks there, 99 bucks there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, it's a, um, we, we, I mean, we've never had, we don't have sales people. We just have five people. I mean, we've just, yeah. we've just grown organically and I, I, and I'm thankful in a lot of ways for that. I just, I don't want to be a uh, a contributor to, we don't want to be a contributor to just the constant uh, noise. Cause it's hard for y'all to find a signal when there is that much noise. Um, yeah. And, you know, we just kind of relied on, let's just take great care of our customers and, you know. Yeah. Just, and it's nice having a company where you can be like, I'm going to email Will and ask him about this. <laughs> Although I will be the first to say my, our buddy Kika, who's like our director of operations, she's the one who's, you know, introduced and implemented schedule like she does all her scheduling and I'm like blissfully ignorant, but, um, so I'm not as like familiar with the software, but, um, yeah, it's, it's nice having a company that's small enough where you feel like I'm not going to get lost if I reach out and need support or whatnot. That is, well, thank you. I, that's important to us. I mean, we've, we've got, um, I have my, my cell phone numbers on the public facing website to this day. I just, yeah. <laughs> we want people to better reach us. I mean, I always, you know, it's like, if you're serving the, I, I don't get why there's all these companies and I hear they have bad customer service. I mean, I won't name it, not just, not like scheduling company, just saying like it's restaurant general. service providers. And um, you're like, but you're serving the industry that is built on the ultimate customer service, which is, <laughs> hospitality like how can you not provide you know like it's just yeah it's kind of like it's amazing to me but um well so but y'all've got just good for you yeah uh, what a cool business y'all built what a cool you know good lifestyle good business i mean even just being right there in the neighborhood like that's that's a great thing so yeah, i, I took my hat i mean it's it's you know it, it's really 
there's so much pull in our culture and our society to just more and more and grow, grow. And then people realize like, holy cow, I wasn't even around when my kids grew up. And um, that yeah. happened here all the freaking time. And so it's, it's wonderful that y'all have been wise enough, you know, at your younger age to get, get that balance down. And I would just say, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't, don't ever yeah. forget that. Cause it, Thank it's you. lost in that stuff sometimes, but um, it's a, it's a good thing if you can find that balance. Um, yeah. Well, we'll see what we do when our lease is up. That's a, well, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> when is that up? Um, I think Homer, we have five more years and we can renew. I mean, hopefully there's, you know, just that's such a moment in your life where you're like, are we still doing this? Are we doing something else? You know, but it's like, I feel like there's so many restaurant people that are like, well, what else would I do? <laughs> right. Well, I hope you all get to buy one one or both of those buildings one day if the folks that own them near your neighbors retire or whatever, you know, that that that's the key there in that in that real estate if you can. In the meantime, I feel like the key is hire good people, be really good to them and you will have a good life. <laughs> hire good people, be really good to them and you'll have a good life. Yeah, be really good to your people. That's exactly right. Um People forget that sometimes too, particularly in your industry. It's uh, there's all this technology, there's different foods and all this kind of stuff. You got to get, but gosh, it's just about the people. Um, I mean, if you don't have good food, you're done anyway. So that's a, that's, you know, but I find that like the places we gravitate to as a family, like we're going to see my, my stepmom um, tomorrow and we're going to this up in Raleigh and we're going to this place where Yes, the food's really good, but it is all about the people. Like yeah. the way they treat us when we're there, that's why we will always go back. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, totally. yeah. yeah. Um, well, listen, I know you have some other stuff going on. I appreciate the time. Um, Absolutely. Sorry, I was late. Yeah, I'm heading to the to the dentist in a few minutes, so. <laughs> ah, I hear you. One of those necessary, th I need to do that. Um, yeah. Easy to put those things off. Well, listen, um, tell Logan hello and thank you and Kika and your whole team. We appreciate you and we're proud to serve you. And thank you for taking the time to do this, Sarah. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the time to hear more about our story. Well, it looks like it's a nice day there. No rain in Seattle. So go enjoy that nice sunny it's day. Beautiful. I'm going to go get in the dentist chair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll see you. Bye. Bye.